Hello. It's the 25th of October, 2012, and this is another special edition of the Health Research Report. And this is Ralph Turciano responding to the International Office of Medicine to report on lowering the vitamin D requirement to 20 nanograms per milliliter of blood of most of the United States population. All right. Supposedly, the International Office of Medicine came out on the 24th of October and made a press release in the PLOS, the Public Library of Science, saying that after reviewing over a thousand published studies and speaking to experts all across the field, that they are going to lower the blood requirements of vitamin D down to 20 nanograms per milliliter, which is an amazing statement. It has a tremendous amount of impact in regards to food programs like school lunch, hospitals, prisons, you name it, any general nutrition program. It does make those programs a lot easier to obtain because it would be a lot cheaper because they don't have to really provide any vitamin D. Also, they took the benefit of saying that nearly 80 million Americans won't need to take vitamin D supplements. Well, the question is, is how did the IOM come upon this amazing conclusion to lower the vitamin D requirement in the blood to 20 nanograms per milliliter? Remember, we're not talking vitamin D intake. We're talking about blood levels, something to be checked by a doctor or a hospital. Because the main reason being 20 nanograms per milliliter, uh, traditionally, rickets begins to set in at 20 nanograms per milliliter. And of course, the IOM said, well, you only really need vitamin D, placidly they said, to prevent rickets. Well, let's counter the IOM on a few different issues. All right, number one, the 20 nanogram per milliliter number that they came up with, which I would really love to see the scientific data supporting that, because that's just an amazingly low, reckless number to come out. All right, well, what does vitamin D help with? Well, it helps with lung impairment. American Thoracic Society, American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care, July 2012. It helps with lung cancer. Clinical Cancer Research, March 2011. Helps with tuberculosis. And that's why you have sunrooms. Uh, proceedings of National Academy of Science, September 2012. Multiple sclerosis. Well, we all know that. Low levels of vitamin D are associated with multiple sclerosis. It hasn't been determined yet with adding vitamin D will help improve it. All right, too many articles to mention on that. Weight gain. Well, we'll just mention one to start. The May edition of the Journal of Adolescent Health, 2009. Inflammation. March 1st, 2011, issue the Journal of Immunology. Type 2 Diabetes, Endocrine Society, Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, December 2011. Childhood Asthma, American Thoracic Society, American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care, Medicine, September 2011, as opposed to the first one I mentioned, 2012. Cirrhotic Arthritis, Arthritis Care and Research, July 2011. Blood Pressure, 2011, in regards to racial disparity in blood pressure as vitamin D a factor, Journal of General Internal Medicine, and the National Institutes of Health and University of Missouri came up with an article in regards to obesity. The main reason being the IOM and its 20 nanograms per milliliter number. The more heavier you are, the greater the amount of vitamin D you require because vitamin T tends to be absorbed into the fat cells. So for children... They recommend as high as 4,000 IUs. Where'd they get the number? From the International Office of Medicine also. I guess it must have been a better day for them. As they say, obese adolescents face an increased risk deficiency because they tend to absorb vitamin D in the fat stores, which prevents it from being utilized in the blood, said Catherine Peterson, Associate Professor of Nutrition and Exercise Physiology. We found that a daily dose of 4,000 IUs of vitamin D3, the maximum intake level set by the IOM, is both safe and effective to improve vitamin D levels in obese adolescents. And what about this one? This one got me going too. Depression. From the Endocrine Society 94th Annual Meeting in Houston. Notice how I use something which the IOM is not. It's called footnotes. Their level after treatment range to improve depression was 32 to 38 nanograms a milliliter. Ah, milliliter for blood, according to the study abstract. What does the, in, the Endocrine Society consider a deficient level of vitamin D? 21 nanograms per milliliter. What does the IOM want to set their idea of having a decent level of vitamin D in the bloodstream? 20. 
Wow, it's amazing that the IOM would pick a number which is considered below the deficiency state. We're not talking insufficiency, we're talking deficiency. And what are these levels? Well, the current guidelines equal or greater to 32 nanograms per milliliter is considered normal. Insufficient, less than 32 nanograms per milliliter. Deficient, 20 nanograms per milliliter or less. When you hit that 20 nanogram per milliliter in the bloodstream, rickets begins to set in. When rickets sets in, you're already gone through a whole level of problems related to vitamin D deficiency. Well, this is Ralph Turciano from the Health Research Report, 25th October 2012, in a rebuttal to the IOM's recommendation of a critically reckless level of low vitamin D. Thank you.